Greetings and welcome to another Lessons with Odin. On this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to make these adorably festive, springy, cute vine earrings. Um, this is kind of related to a Patreon tutorial. I played around with herringbone and I enjoyed this technique, so I kind of modified it into something simpler and kind of springy. Well, I guess by now it's probably close to summery things, and I think it's really cute. I had these forget-me-nots that a lovely viewer had sent to me, and I finally found something where I could use them. You can also make an entire bracelet out of this. You don't have to make just earrings out of it, but I figured it's cute with a small motif and little dangly parts. It would be a cute idea. So, this project requires very few materials, which is always nice. You will need... Some seed beads. Up to three colors of size 11 seed beads. This is entirely up to you what you want to do. You can even do just one if you want the whole thing to look all green and viney. Um, there's basically three key parts in this project. You have your two vines here. You can make them the same color or you can make them a different color. And then you have your end cap section here which you can also use the same color, or you can use a completely different color. It's all up to you. But these will be size 11s, though I suppose you could do it with 15s or Delicas even if you wanted, but these all should be the same size. So, you will also need a color of size 15 seed beads, probably something that matches, but if not, whatever. Size 15s. You will need 12 beads. Now, these can be any beads that you want, I'm using 4mm bicones just to see what it looks like, and yeah, so I have those 4mm bicones. You can also use 3mm bicones, but the cutest thing I had was these forget-me-nots. I think they look really adorable, so if you have a bunch of those, feel free to use those. If you are turning them into earrings, two dangly parts. I've got these top-drilled bicones that I'm going to use. Two ear wires if you're making them into earrings. And, of course, your needle and thread. I'm using this tulip size 12 needles, as well as Nymo, because I hate myself. So, that is all you need. With all that being said, let us get started. So, like with all herringbone, flat herringbone projects, we're going to start off with a ladder stitch. But I'm going to start off with a double ladder stitch. So, so I'm going to thread on four beads, pull that down, leaving about a six-inch tail. We are going to use it to do one of the ends, so we don't have to, like, work around and tie around everything. I'm going to go back up through two beads, pull it together so that we have two-by-two two square of beads stuck to each other. I'm going to then go down the next two beads... Add on two more beads, go back around the second loop of beads, pull that tight, go back up, add one last set of two beads, go up the third set, pull tight, and to cinch the deal we're going to go back down that last set of beads. Now I'm going to weave up and down to make my way over to the other side. doesn't really necessarily need to do this, just I like to make things nice and tight. So that my working thread is at the opposite end of my tail. Now, we're going to start in on our herringbone. And for this, we're basically going to be making two separate single strands on each of these sections. We have a section here, one, two, and a section here, one, two. So I'm going to start off with that going to add my two beads. I'm going to go down through just the first bead, next over. Then I'm going to immediately turn my thread. So I'm going to go to the left, pass back up through two beads, which will be the base column, as well as the beads that we just added. Then I'll continue my herringbone stitch. I will add two beads, go down just the last bead that I've added, going up the first column to pull that through, and go on. Keep going until you have about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, depending on how long you want these beads, this uh, these earrings to be. This one is about an inch and a half of a strand that I started with and twisted those together. 
it's going to be a little bit longer than your final twist is going to be. So just keep that in mind. I'm going to measure about one and a quarter inch. All right, so I've got my one and a quarter inch here. This is what the length I am comfortable with. So my thread is coming out of the outside. I'm going to move to the inside and go all the way down until we meet our base again. So I've just passed my needle through every single one of these beads. I'm going to also go down the first base bead, then come back up through the third one to begin our next row. So we start from up here and we're going to do the same exact things on this side with either another collar or some sort. So I've got two beads added. I'm going to go down the last bead over. So we start our herringbone stitch and it looks like that. Then we're going to turn our thread by passing up through the inner bead on our anchor row. Then finish the turn by passing through the outermost bead that you just added. Add on two more beads. Go down the inside bead. Go up the two beads on the leftmost column. Then you're going to continue all the way up until you meet the top of the other column. Then you'll be ready for the next steps. And then do yourself a favor, after you have made this component, do it again for the second earring because then you will know exactly how many beads you will need for the other one to match the length instead of having to guess after the twist happens to see how many beads you need. Or you can count each individual bead, but I am not about that life. Finish your component and then come back and we will do the twist. All right, I've got my two strands all loose and not so full of juice. And they were about 20 stitches, in case that is something important that you want to reference. So, now here comes the fun part. I am going to take one of my strands, put it over the other, on from right to left, take the new one, right to left, and then I'm going to pinch that intersection together to hold it to make sure they stay nice and secure. Then we're going to do a double-ish herringbone stitch. We're basically going to mimic the ladder stitch from the beginning. So I'm adding four size 11 seed beads that are my border color. And I'm going to go just on the first bead and the next one over so that I have a little cap here. Then I'm going to pick up the innermost of the other strand, pull that through, pick up four more seed beads and go down the outermost bead. Then I'm going to go up three beads. That's the innermost of the strap color and the two at the tip. I'm going to go down the two on the other strand to cinch them together. Then I'm going to reinforce that once. So I'm going to, just going to go back there, down one, finally up one. And with a little bit of twisting and maneuvering, you will have your successful vine work. We're going to add our dangly part this time. And to set up for that, I'm going to add two size 11 seed beads. From there, I'm just going to go down one of the cap herringbone, so that we end up with a herringbone stitch right in the center. Then I'm going to move up two beads from the left. I'm going to move to the right one set of beads, and we'll set up for our last stitch. I'm just going to add one seed bead and go down the next two, so that when we pull it down we have one bead right in the center. I'm going to go back up to go to that bead in the center. Pull that through so we are right here. Now we're ready to add our dangly part. I'm going to add three size 15s, my dangly part, three size 15s. Then I'm going to pass back through the opposite side of that bead on the very tip to anchor it down there. Now, depending on the size of your drop at the top, you might need fewer or more beads on each side. Just depends on what you're using. 
reinforce that and then end up coming out through one of the straps on the very first row. All right, now here comes the fun part. We're going to kind of glue these together, these two strands the way they are, because all we have to do is like kind of twist it around in order to ruin our nice pretty aesthetic here. So, I'm actually going to move up the second bead on this first strap. I'm just going to be working with the clear strap for now, but we're going to be doing basically a zigzag pattern adding in our flowers while we stitch this place together. So, I'm going to add one size 15, one of my whatever floral beads I'm using. In my case, it's a 4mm bicone, or it could be a forget-me-not if you want it more floral. And then one size 15. I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to skip the first size 15 and pass back down through the 4mm bicone and the next size 15. Then, I'm going to go up the third bead on the herringbone strap. Pull it tight so that we start a fringy bit, like so. From here, I'm going to take a look at the intersection point between the blue and the clear. And I'm going to move up, probably it looks like a good place would be three beads forward. Now, there is no rhyme or reason to this. You can literally do this wherever you want. There's no accuracy to this, and it won't impact what it looks like. So don't stress if it doesn't look exactly like mine. And especially if you use a thread that really matches the piece, it'll hide it even better. I've pulled that through. Then I'm going to pick up a neighboring blue bead. Maybe another, just for the heck of it. Pull that tight. Then, I'm going to add another fringe drop. Once again, size 15, your flower bead, size 15, pull it down. Skip over the first size 15 and pass back through the flower bead and the other size 15. Like that, my thread is coming out of the innermost bead on this side. I'm going to anchor it by going up three or four beads until I find a nice place to anchor it back on the clear strap. So I've gone up one more, then I'm going to take a couple of beads from the clear strap and pull that through so that I end up back towards the top on the opposite side. I might pick up a few more just to get a nice position for where my last bead should go, my last fringe. So I add a size 15, my flower bead, size 15, pull that down, skip the 15, go to the next, flower bead, and 15. Then we anchor it on the other side of the column, so we end up with that. Now we're going to turn our thread so that we start at the blue column. So all I'm going to do is from here, since I'm coming up, I'm not going to bother with the anchor points because they have a lot of thread in there and we're still going to use it, so we don't want to add any more stress. So all I'm going to do is just go up the clear bead, go down the blue, then finally up through the blue column. Then we're basically going to be doing the same thing. Except in the opposite, we're going to add a fringe drop, probably lower on here since we have one way up here. We're going to go down until we find a nice intersection for the clear bead. Move up here, probably add another bead here, go down, and back towards the blue to add our last one. So repeat those steps to add two, maybe three more beads. And then we will finish up with the opposite end. Alrighty, and that is what you should end up with. I decided to put five on instead of four or six because whatever. Anyway, so I've ended that thread and I've gone and put my needle on my tail. So we're just basically going to do the same thing on the tip end as the top to so put our loop for our earring binding. So I start my thread here. I'm going to go down the very first bead next over. Probably use a pair of pliers because there's quite a bit of threads in here. Then we go back up. Add on two beads. Go down one again. Go back up the next two. 
add on one bead, go down just one bead, pull through, go back up, the next bead, finally through that center. Add on seven size 15 seed beads, pull that through that bead in the center, wrap it around and reinforce a couple times, then end your thread. To repeat on the other one, and then you will have your finished earrings. So, that is what I have you for you for this Lessons with Odin. I hope you enjoyed. I like playing around with the herringbone a bit, so I thought this was a fun little adventure. It was kind of actually a uh, splintering off of a previous Patreon tutorial, which is of these bracelets that you do some really cool twisty braided shit with. Um, here is a picture of it. Yes. So if you want to learn to do that, I will leave my links to my Patreon page down below. And you'll also get access to the other tutorials that I have on there, not just that one. I just made a really spiffy, beautiful, blossoming thingy with lots of extra dangly parts. So if you want to learn to make that and other tidbits, check out the link down below. And I think that will do it for me. Be sure to like up and subscribe. If you want to see more bullshit from me, check out all of my social media deets and my blog. I did some lovely, wonderful adventures with plants and terrariums, which I should get a better video of. I don't know. If you're interested in plants, maybe I should do more plant videos. If you want, comment down below if that's something you would be interested in. But, yes, all pertinent links will be down below. Thank you all so much for joining me. And, of course, if there's anything I need to be trying out right now, Feel free to let me know down below, and I will see you next time.